Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to create a very simple project attribute, custom field for projects. And I'm going to call it product. And so in this uh, hypothetical situation, we have projects and each one of them can be applicable to a particular product in an organization. Where we start with this is uh, we start in project web app. And um, in this particular case, I'm going to create a custom field that requires a lookup table, meaning a predefined list of values. Always the, the best way one possible so you can enforce standardization instead of having people freeform type values. Uh, they select from a pre-filled list of values. Product, right? Product A. And I'm just going to make this very simple. Product B. They're my two products. Um, some options here you can have uh, at different levels if you're creating some kind of hierarchy in this particular case. That's why you see there are different levels of code mask here. There are different levels uh, here as well. I can put description fields in here, but for the purposes of this particular demonstration, I'm keeping things very simple. Um, with regard to the display order and the lookup table, different ways you can do it. You can have it sort by row number, which is the way I have it set right now, or you can do sort by ascending or descending. Let's save. Oh, actually, we're going to create a name here. We're going to call it product. It's going to be a text field, and we'll save it. Now we have to create the field that references the lookup table. We're going to call that product. A couple things to note here. What is it describing? That's what this means right here, entity and type. Is it describing a project, a resource, or a task? And we already mentioned this. We said it's going to describe a project. Um, what type of value? Uh, and we already said it's going to be a text field. And then where is it going to derive its values or its data? And we said it's going to be a lookup table. We select the lookup table radio button. And then we look up the lookup table from here. And we should be able to find our product lookup table right there, which we did. Um, there are some options here. Do we want it to pre-fill with a default value? If I did, I would select this checkbox and select a default value from the table. Maybe I always wanted to select project A by default. Um, if we were looking to get a little more advanced here, we had subordinate values and some kind of hierarchical structure. If we had uh, uh, a multi-lookup type of table, if we were using formulas, these options would become enabled. If we were um, associating this with a, with a department field, another video for another time, a little more advanced my capabilities. But again, we're keeping this very simple. So we created our custom lookup table, created our custom field. Now let's go ahead while we're in service settings, create a view that's going to reference this. And to do this under a look and feel, we look for manage views. We're going to select manage views. And I'm going to um, select my basic summary view here. What you can see is the views are grouped by where they're used in the system. Project center is where the, the list of projects are displayed. And that's exactly what I want because I want a view that's grouping projects by the product field. I highlight the row for summary. And the reason I'm only highlighting is because I want to copy. Click the copy button. Tool does some work here. And eventually it's going to refresh at uh, such point in time, I'm going to have to give this a name. And what I'm going to do in this case is say summary by product. Click OK. Uh, the view is going to be saved. And we should see summary by product right here. We're going to click on it because we're going to edit the view. And uh, what I'm going to do is first I have to add the field to the definition to be able to use it in any way, shape, or form. There it is in the list of available fields, I need to add it to the displayed fields. Go ahead and click the Add button. And if I scroll down here, what I want to do is I want to group by. So I'm going to the grouping section. That's all I care about. I want a view that groups projects by product. OK, and that's all we're going to do. Oop, we selected the wrong value here. We said we wanted to group by product. OK, and that's all we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to select with all the other values. All these, you know, all these other values came from the original view because we copied a view. Uh, these categories, I'm really saying who gets to be able to uh, view this particular view, so on and so forth. So we don't have to worry about all these other settings because we copied this existing view. Great. Created the custom lookup table. 
custom field, created the view. Now what we need to do is assign a value to a project. And let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Project. We're gonna connect to our project line environment. I have one test project in here I'm going to use this for. And that is my test project. We're gonna check this out um, because whenever you need to change a value in a project, you're going to need to check the project out. Project information is where I'm going to want to go. I navigate to the project ribbon, then project information. And while in here, you'll note that, hey, there is product. If I select from the drop down, there are the two different type of products that I put in here. If you recall, product A and B. Select A in this case, click OK. If you recall from earlier videos, what do you need to do when you make a change? Well, publish, publish, publish. Publish this project. And if you watch in the lower right, you can see it's synchronizing the data. Now it's publishing the project data, 0% complete. We'll wait till it gets to 100, that way we know it's done. Then we can validate the results in Project Web App, Project Center. And it should be just about done here. Very small project. So the um, publishing project, it's probably gonna go from zero to 100, very quick process here. And there it is, successful. I'm gonna exit out, file close. We'll say, do you wanna check it? And yes, I do. Navigate back to Project Web App, navigate to Projects. I do need to navigate to that view. I'm gonna click on a cell in the current view to expose the ribbon. There's a straight summary, and there's my view, if you recall, summary by project. Switch to that view, and what I'm gonna do is move this divider bar out because I'm going to expand the main column. Keep in mind, right, I have a lot of projects in here already. I only set the value for one. Therefore, you're going to have one grouping band that has, or rather that represents all the projects in which the value for product is not set. That's the first one here, but there's the second one. Product A, first project, Dan's test 101. Therefore, if I went back in and set the values for all the other projects, they would either be represented on product A or product B. And that's it for creating a simple project attribute field. Thanks for joining.